Hey YouTube, I am recently have had some problems procuring my general standby ESC, which are the uh, Hobby Wing Spacewalker ESCs, and I'm not sure why. I used to get them on Amazon, and they had they had. I like Amazon because of the free shipping. I mean, let's be honest that uh, when when you buy a fifteen dollar part or a twenty dollar part, and they add five or six bucks for shipping, it just kind of grates on my nerves. So Amazon is always good for that. And um, at any rate, um, since they haven't been carrying too many of those ESCs on on Amazon lately, at least with Prime, I've I've decided to look elsewhere, and I stumbled onto these ZTWs. And I actually put one in, I forgot what plane, I can't remember, but I put one in another plane and it did fine. You know, I didn't have any problems getting the throttle to calibrate or, or getting, you know, the aircraft to work or, you know, it just seemed fine. I didn't have any issues at all. Uh, the servos all worked. I, I used the, the BEC that was part of that, part of that ESC. So I decided I'm going to keep trying them. And um, as a result of, uh, you know, an ongoing, ongoing purchases of this particular ESC, I decided to go ahead and invest in the programming card. And normally these cards are a few dollars. Honestly, like the Turnigy and, and the uh, Hobby Wing cards are nicer because they have a nice little LED setup, much more visual indicator on what's going on. And I know ZTW has some options. They have a wireless programming. I think there's even an app. But this was six bucks on Amazon. So I just got it and decided to try it out. And um, I just thought since I bought it and had to do the homework and do the reading and the research that I would just throw together a quick video in case uh, somebody out there wants to that's using this this equipment would rather watch a video on how to use it than than to read the book, which is in Chinese, uh, Chinese English. So it's not highly descriptive, but I've done the interpretation for you. Let's leave it at that. So first off, let's just jump into the card. Uh, the connection is simple. If you're using a standard BEC equipped electronic speed controller, it's one connection and it's the typical signal wire hot ground. If you're using an opto ESC, you'll only have signal or that's all that'll matter. You might have signal and ground, but you won't have hot. In that case, you need to hook up a five volt BEC to this programming card. So that part's really easy. This is a standard uh, BEC, and if you don't have a BEC and you're running Opto, you need to hook a BEC up to those two pins on the plus and minus. So real simple from that point of view. Now let's cover some of the options that are in this card. First off, I don't know that anyone's using nickel metal hydride batteries anymore, so you simply put the jumper on LiPo. The RPM setup, that has to do with how fast the... the electronic speed controller goes to full throttle. So this is meant for things like gear drive systems such as helicopters. On direct drive stuff, we don't worry about that. So I set mine to RPM off. Uh, there's no RPM governor. If I punch it, it goes up to full throttle. This start has to do with how fast the, uh, the power is applied during start. Again, direct drive, prop drive type system like an airplane, we just turn that off. If you're using a helicopter, you might want to use soft or very soft. That slows up the initial application of power to keep it from jamming up the gears, I guess. I don't particularly like the ESC brake. I know some people advocate for it. I don't like it, so I leave it off. And then this one refers to timing. I haven't tried this yet or paid any attention to it, but I will. The book recommends using auto. That's what I'm going to try. It it also gives guidance, I think, for a certain number of poles or higher. You use the high timing. For a certain number of poles or lower, you use the low timing. I'm just going to leave mine on auto and see how that works for me. Rotation, I always thought this was kind of cool. I mean, obviously, it's easy to to switch two of the power wires on the on going to the motor, but this one gives you an option if you don't if if that's challenging uh, or you've already put up, put it all under a cowl somewhere and don't want to take it apart, this gives you an option to flip the flip the uh, rotation of the motor, which I think is actually kind of cool. Um, voltage cutoff, this is a big one. They default to 3 volts and they reduce power to 60%. I'm not a big fan of that. I, uh, I don't ever run my batteries below uh, 3.5, maybe 3.6 under load. So when I get 
offload and go back to a static. I'd like to see 378 to 382, somewhere in there. So I set mine at 3.2 and I reduced the power uh, to 65%. And then this option, the final option, is what do you want when it hits the cutoff voltage? I think it's a really bad idea to stop the ESC altogether because that means your plane's going down. I'd rather waste a battery than, than lose an airplane. So in my case, I just have it reduce the power. And for the times in my flying career that I've noticed I've gone below my cutoff voltage, uh, I've been able to get my plane back and, and get it on the ground. Uh, I don't do that too much these days, but it has happened. And in, in my case, I prefer to reduce power rather than stop it altogether. So with that done, all that's left is to connect the battery, and you're going to listen for a quick little succession of beeps. So I'll just hit that real quick. All right, battery's plugged in. There we go, quick little succession of beeps. That tells you it's programmed. You disconnect, and you're done. So that's it. That is programming the ZTW Beetles electronic speed controller. Uh, I will continue to fly these and give you guys impressions as I develop them about the ESC, but I've, I've flown this for a little while already and I'm not having, I don't have any concerns. I'll tell you one other thing I really like about these is that I can go two to six S on a 60 amp. And I think the 40 amp is the same. I reserve the right to be wrong on that. But, uh, and, and by the way, price wise, they're very competitive uh, from a pricing standpoint. So, you know, keep an eye out. I'll try and come back and make sure I do a video to let you know how these speed controllers are working out. But for now, that's all I've got on the ZTW Beetles. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if it's been helpful to you at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot.